Hello guys. So I pick this question from Jam um, Jam Physics Past Question Booklet, and I did that because Jam is upcoming. Um, the registration begins on the 14th of of this month, January, and actually the exam, according to the information that is out, the exam is likely to start by 29th of April. So there are just a few months to to begin um, to prepare and it's high time students start preparing if they haven't so the question as you can see we have um it's a physics question but it's likely to come out in the in a further mass examination maybe let's say a further mass y question as well we can see um 10 newton 7 uh, 17 newton and f the f represents uh force that's just a symbol for force so we said the value of f in the figure above when in equilibrium is so which means we're actually looking for an unknown force the third force it's uh, a system of three coplanar forces coplanar forces or some people may say coplanar forces they're actually just forces that are acting on the same plane and I say co uh, some people can say they are concurrent so they are acting at a point that is what concurrent uh, means so this question said the the system is in equilibrium so what in equi if that equilibrium understanding that is actually key to solving this question because um there are two parts of mechanics the mechanics question any any question any, any uh, topic in physics that relates to motion or the influence of forces on bodies which may or may not cause motion is under the branch called mechanics so mechanics has two parts like i started saying dynamics and statics this particular question because of the word equilibrium here because of the word equilibrium it means that it's under statics so statics means there is zero motion something is at rest so it's like a stone on the floor because of of course it's it's mass and inertia it's not likely to move even though of course except a very heavy wind comes and 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 and, and overcome that inertia that resistance to motion or we can say a lead block for instance because of the heavy the heaviness or the heavy nature it's very difficult for it to move so these are examples of objects that are in a, in a static stick in a static state something like that so we can also say they are in equilibrium all forces are are, are pulling from three sides three and these sides you can see that they are in different directions i won't say opposite direction but they are in different directions so the body in this case is not moving so there are actually two ways to solve this but one of the method i will use is i will say um it's called lamis theorem i would i will use that as my second method it's very easy lamis theorem is just like the sign sign rule in mathematics but the first method i will use is by explaining that if an object is in equilibrium it means that the total forces in the total forces acting upon that object in the horizontal uh, direction balances each other they are equal that's another way we can say it so it's like you are pulling from left and right from east and west from the eastern from the eastern direction you have somebody pulling with a, a force of 10 newton from the western side or the opposite side somebody is also pulling with a force of 10 newton of course you won't expect that thing to move so they are balanced they are equal the same thing happens in the northern direction that is in the north south the total forces are also balancing each other they are also equal the only reason why there is no motion is because despite the equality there is an opposite they are in opposite direction so looking at this question now the best the best thing to do first is to illustrate it on a cartesian plane the angle here may cause confusion for now but when you when you remember that bearing and distances give you actually more understanding of where angle is coming from for you to know which direction each force is is is, is actually pulling pulling towards 
it will be easier to solve this question. So I'm going to redraw it and I'm going to use the advantage that my 10, the, the angle between my 10 Newton force and my 17 Newton force is 90 degree. So I'm going to draw my 10 Newton force facing the northern direction. Okay, let me just draw my north-south line. Just last in bearing, we first draw our north-south line. This is north, this is south. Then we draw our east-west line. So we have something like this. This is east and this is west. So I would even do it. I would say this is north. This is east, this is south, and this is west. Something like this. So this my this is where my 10 Newton force is then this is where i'm going to put my 17 newton force the angle between them as before is 90 degrees so if we look at it my 150 degrees where am i going to put it it's the angle between the 17 newton force and f remember f is what we are looking for the third force so i'm going to put it somewhere here if from here to here is 90, I'm going to say, okay, of course, 90 plus an extra 60 gives us 150. So I'm going to put it somewhere here. I will say this is the third force. Remember, uh, a force is a vector. And these three arrows now, if, you're, if there's no arrow head, it does not illustrate the vector. But still, yeah, don't let this one confuse you. I put an arrow head. Uh, should have used a broken line. To, to illustrate this and this that is my west line and my south line why because to to show you that they are not forces so that was a mistake on my part i should have used a broken line but remember uh, i didn't even use pencil to draw this just just that uh, is a rough sketch uh, if i'm if i were to be accurate these two vectors in the first place which is my 17 newton force and my 10 newton force should not even be having almost the same length uh, of line i drew them as almost the same length why because the distance of the line is actually telling us which is which the magnitude of the, the vector so 17 newton in reality should be longer than 10 newton force so like i said it's just a rough sketch but just understand all this basic so this is where I'm going to place my F. Good. Now, the second thing I'm going to do is to write this that the law, the law of equilibrium, the law of equilibrium states by the law of equilibrium, the total forces in the x axis, which is in the horizontal direction should sum up to zero and likewise the total forces in the y direction should also sum up to zero so that is what we are going to do now if this is the case then by looking at what we have here now we can see that if i want to take this as my case um, i want to use this to defend this uh, to defend my answer of this question I cannot use either of them actually, but I want to start with the horizontal component, the horizontal ve uh, vectors here. Because, because I reduced this diagram, it's very obvious that the 10 Newton force here is not even having any effect in the x direction. It's facing not completely, it's completely facing the vertical. So it's like someone is pulling upward, but it's not pulling east or west. It's just pulling upward with a force of 10 Newton. So, but someone is pulling completely east. With the force of 17 newton so i'll pick that i will say plus 17 i will say plus 17 newton that is one force in the x direction okay uh what other force do we have in the x direction we have a component of f here remember f is pulling in the southwest direction so meaning some part of f is pulling south and some part of f is also pulling west so now there is an angle here which is very important. That angle is what is we we'll call it theta. And what, what is that theta? Remember the angle between 17 Newton and F here, which is this angle. We said it's 150 degrees. If this is angle on a straight line to be 180 by supplementary angles, theta is going to be equal to 30 degrees. This angle is very important because if you know this angle, 
questions related to resol resolution of vectors and resolution of vector will not be hard for you. Whenever you have an angle that is inclined to the x-axis, whether it is the negative x-axis on this side or the positive x-axis on this side, just know that your horizontal component you are going to be using cosine and your vertical component you are going to be using sine. Don't let the question confuse you. If the question inclined the angle, this is what I mean by inclined. You see the way my, my, my angle is starting from the vector line itself and ending on the x-axis, not ending on the y-axis. This is, this is an opposite case. If we have an angle like this, which is the complementary angle, remember complementary angle sum of 90. This angle here, I'll call it phi. Phi is not what I need. You can use it to, but to avoid confusion, stick to one, one, um, one uh, let me say, um, particular method that will not confuse you. So theta is inclined to the horizontal axis and is equal to 30 degrees. So I will say that my fx, what I mean by fx is the horizontal component of f. My fx is going to be equal to f, which I don't know, f cos 30 degrees, f cos 30 degrees. The vertical component, on the other hand, will be f sine 30 degrees. Good. So I will say 17 newton. Now, on the second note, it's going to be negative because it's on the negative x-axis. So I'm saying 17 newton minus f cos 30 newton sums up to zero sums up to zero so when i add the two of them it gives me zero so if i solve this now of course i'm going to get f cos 30 is equal to 17 because when i move f cos 30 to the other side the sign will change so i can now divide both sides by cos 30 if i divide both sides by cos cos 30 this cancels this and my f is going to be equal to 17 divided by cos 30 17 divided by cos 17 divided by cos 30 is giving me 19.6 19.6 newton and that is the value of f so if you want to use lamis theorem as an option two to solve this lamis theorem i will just write it here lamis theorem is the same as the sine rule it's going to be f over sine 90 is equal to 10 over sine sine 150 so when you prove when you prove this this lambda theorem you realize that it's just a basic analogy that the 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 relationship is like this the the ratio of each force one of the three forces with the sign of the angle between the other forces that are opposite to it is constant in all cases so if i simplify this you see that you are still going to get 19.6 or approximately 20 as your answer so one thing i wanted to remember before i end this video if you have any question of course you can drop it in the comment section but i wanted to remember that as a convention if unless otherwise stated in the question some some this question now came with us with the diagram it's very very easy to of course redraw this and you know where to place your your angles you know how to get but some questions will come and they will give you a direction will give you a vector say okay 17 newton 20 degrees another the vector 20 newton or let's say 10 newton uh, 220 degrees measure your angles in the clockwise direction it's just like a tip measure your angles in the clockwise direction except it did otherwise in most cases remember there are two ways to measure angles when you are doing brain and distance we measure it in the clockwise direction but in trigonometry you measure your angles in the anti-clockwise direction so always measure your angles in the clockwise direction except stated otherwise you are going to get you if you now some people might ask what if i measure in the anti-clockwise direction wouldn't i get the same answer at least it's just like i'm going to start from a different you get the same magnitude but you are going to get different direction so thank you for watching please like and subscribe my video and share
God bless you.